people fail to understand autism for what it is and it's from my perspective from myself functions of the brain are different so you're entering into every situation with a pre-existing condition of the mind that alters your thinking, your thinking alters your behaviour and you're not just the same as everyone else, there is no sort of one size fits all but it's like the estimate is that 1% of the population are, are autistic so then you're the odd one out no, you're the one who's acting differently and the only way you can then interact is to structure yourself in a way that is suitable for everyone else but no one else will make that effort to structure themselves in a way that's suitable to you so how can I put this it's kind of like you, you recognise yourself that you will be seen as the problem, blamed as the problem, and the only way you can interact is in the manner that satisfies everyone else. That is degrading. It is severely degrading and debilitating, and it leaves no room for you to exist as yourself. And the whole time that you have to exist how that person wants you, how that person wants you, how that person wants you, it's almost like a kind of schizophrenic mindset you, you almost become like a sociopath where you mould yourself to these people because you are forced to function at the most fragile point of their emotions at their weakest point so that is the most you're allowed to be is their weakness that is all you become is their weakness and you can't have honest conversations with people you the fact that you see reality, you, you don't function in terms of emotions, in, in in terms of autism. Yes, you can calculate the emotions, you can find formulas for emotions, but you're replicating them. You're not actually existing as that feeling, you do not actually have that feeling, but you can recognise it and understand it, and you can, you can see it in other people, and you know when it's happening, and because you can see that formula you can see that pattern that's all my mind is it's like patterns protocols procedures formulas it's it's like systems analysis if you've ever seen a police drama or something and they're going to go on a raid and they've got all the photos up of all the suspects and all the lines linking them up this one's connected to that one that one's his brother they're the ones who are bringing it in from abroad this that the other blah 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 it all connects up that's kind of like what my mind's like everything i've ever seen, read, heard, done, experienced anything that's passed through my sensory perception is still right there it's there, it exists, it lives somewhere within me it's there, it's all up on the biggest wall you could imagine that's all there but then there's another wall where I've simplified everything down into its patterns I managed to break it down into its, its base forms a bit like A times B equals C that's the pattern now A could be any value B could be any value C could be any value but as long as you've got two of those values and you know the action you're carrying out you can find the other value it's that kind of thing that, well 2 times 4 is a scenario 6 times 8 is a scenario a million times a billion is a scenario but what they all have about them, every different scenario that you could lay out will all follow that ex same, exact same pattern of A times B equals C. So then C is a result of A times B or B times A. You can find the value of B by dividing C by A or you can find the value of A by dividing C by B. And it's there and it's fixed and it's permanent and that's how it functions and that's how it is and that's what you know it to be. So irrespective of the scenario, I can understand what is actually happening by the patterns. Now other people haven't developed that ability. It, it, it's like learning maths, you know, like it, that's what it really is. It is patterns, formulas and, con and calculations. Well, the calculations of my mind are beyond degree level. People who 
can't see that and function purely on emotions and rubbish at kind of nursery school level. But then there's people who do have an understanding of it. They pretend that they're emotional and they're kind of like secondary school, you know, between secondary school and A-level. They're the manipulative people. They're the people who play games. They're the people who twist things up because they know exactly how to play all those other emotional people who are at nursery school level in their calculations and they know how to frustrate the people like me who are beyond degree level in terms of their calculations and then you end up in this complex situation so it's that person who's in the middle there they'll they'll pretend to be emotional because then when you lay out logic to them they'll fail to understand the logic even though they can grasp it but you come with patterns that are beyond them. They, they know how pa patterns function. They know the patterns. They know them for themselves. They know certain ones. But the fact that you're functioning beyond them, they then pretend to be at nursery school level and start crying about emotions. But once you, you get beyond all of that and you really can break things down to patterns, apart from genuine situations like grief or those major traumatic situations, all emotion is is a want for self-fulfillment. That's all most emotions are. Someone crying because they got McDonald's but they wanted KFC. You've still got the food you need to sustain you. You could be eating anything and have the food that you need to sustain you. But your want of self-fulfillment for your satisfaction, for your pleasure, for your desires, just you, purely you, is now crying because you didn't get the thing you want. And it happens in so many situations. And... The way to tell that someone is crying over a want is when they go beyond necessity. There's no need for that to be happening. There's no need for it to be that way. Well then, why is it that way? You start to analyse. Why are they being that way? And with simple questions you can ask people and find out why it is they're actually upset. And what it always comes down to, without foul, is that they have a want. They have a desire. They have something that will satisfy them, fulfil them. There's something there that if they had that, then they could calculate they are happy. Because they haven't got that, they calculate they are not happy. Therefore, they react in a manner that demonstrates they are not happy. It's not that they're actually sad, it's just that they can't calculate happy. That is the problem. But... Once you function on need, and if all you function on is need, and there are no, no wants, you know, it, I, I don't care what numbers you're adding together. It doesn't matter how how much you want it to be. This answer: if two plus two equals four, then two plus two equals four. If you want it to equal five, and you're going to cry because it doesn't equal five, you're the one with the problem. You're the one who can't deal with reality. You're the one who is incapable of logical, rational thinking. But people don't want to accept that. And it just comes down to such basic things. The world is so simple and basic once you can understand it for what it is. The only reason it becomes complicated is because there is a way that someone wants it to be. They want it to be this way. They want to get away with what they've done. They want to lie. They want to deceive. They want to play their games. Because having that control over people f fulfills them. You see, they, they, they've got that sort of secondary school, almost sort of college level understanding of patterns, and that allows them to play the, or play games with all those people who are at nursery level. So when you present to them as someone who's sort of quiet, polite, articulate, this, that, the other... They think that you're at that nursery school level. They think you don't understand how things work because you've, you're being nice, you're being this, that, the other. But what I'm doing is I'm seeing them for what they are. Never take my politeness for weakness. I will be polite so that you lay yourself out to me. Once you've laid yourself out to me, I will know you for what you are. Then once I know you for what you are, you will become upset because you didn't want me to see it. But it's your choice to show me. But you see, in most situations, you have that manipulative mindset of those people in the middle ground. And they try to achieve positions, roles or job titles 
where they can inflict on people, where they're allowed to do that in their own perception. They're not really allowed to do it, but it goes unnoticed, it goes unchecked, especially in the workplace. And it just, it becomes impossible to tackle. Because you, you're functioning on logic, I am, or any, anyone who's at that upper level, is functioning on logic, reality, rational, coherent thinking, and you've got someone being so illogical to a point where it's unbelievable. You, they'll do anything they can to try to defy logic. They'll do anything they can to try and make themselves right to a point where you wonder, how do you even get out of bed in the morning? I mean, how, how do you tie your laces? How, how did you get to work? How did you get through any situation if you really don't have those logical skills? And then having behaved that way and trying to deflect everything and make you the problem and this, that, the other and all the ways in which they pretend they can't deal with reality, can't understand reality, can't comprehend logic, they've got no rational thinking, no capability of having a conversation or properly communicating without ending up crying. You're meant to respect them as a person. You're meant to respect the role that they have. You're meant to respect the title that they carry. Why? Why? It, how can you? Why would they then expect you to? Other than for their fulfilment. It's all that life becomes for some people is a process of not being allowed to exist beyond the fulfilment of other people. And then that forces you into a state of shutdown, isolation, and it's impossible to interact or communicate with people. You, if you start off with this big full story of your life people would reject you straight away you know like why why are you bringing that up straight away so then you have to sort of control how you let that out find the appropriate points to mention something about yourself or your life or how you function but the whole time you're interacting without them knowing that full story they're building an assumption of who you are and once those assumptions are in place it's so hard to then break those assumptions and it becomes process whereby every person you interact with becomes someone who to some extent harms you and forces you to overexert yourself you either have to bend yourself and mold yourself to their assumptions to stop them crying you have to work out the best way to work with their assumptions to a point where you can build something constructive to actually lay out who you are but that takes a lot of work and you really have to know someone to do that and you don't get the time to really get to know someone so in depth or you can just be kind of brutal blunt and just tell it how it is right from the start and then no one wants to know you anyway your story is too big for them it's too far beyond them it's it's not something they can cope with they haven't got the constructs to process that and then again whatever interaction you're in you become the problem but it's going back to that one percent thing it doesn't make the way you are being wrong you know you're not wrong for being the way you are just because you're that odd one out the problem is that the masses operate within certain boundaries within certain parameters and no one ever really goes beyond that so if they've met 99 people today and all those people will have been within all these preset boundaries they'll all exist within this within this sort of measurable space you then exist beyond that and it's just kind of like with lies becoming truth if everybody says it then it must be true and it's kind of that way everyone's doing it everyone thinks like that everyone's behaving like that so therefore that must be the way it must be it has to be therefore you are the odd one out and there's no room for you to exist unless you mould yourself around these other people. But every time you ask for just a little bit back, for them to just put themselves aside, for them to give you a moment to build a construct, they won't allow that to happen. It, it's always going to be upon you to make that effort. And it, it is so tiring. You, you just get exhausted. What is the point of interacting with people who don't actually want to interact with you? They don't actually like you. 
they like what they can get out of you they like the ways that you benefit them they like they like it when you tidy up their mess they like it when you can help them to get through a situation they like it when that favors them but when they have to respect the effort you've made and put themselves aside to make the effort for you it becomes impossible all of a sudden you are the problem and they know they know that they can mess you up by just being absolutely stupid and refusing to listen how are you then meant to get anywhere how are you then make, meant to make any kind of progress oh what put yourself aside don't be so selfish <laughs> am I being selfish for one moment I ask that it's about me just for one moment Oh, but then once they've accepted that, took that on board and put that construct in place, they'll always have to function in respect of that. But you see, we, that 1%, the odd ones out, the people with autism, we've done that all our lives. Every time we've been around you, we've made the effort for the fact that you're so fragile. Our every interaction with you is taking care of your fragile emotions that's this existing at the point of your your most fragile self just so that you don't end up crying and then you want respect <laughs> no one really respects you none of us actually respect you never had any respect for you we've just accepted your inability to deal with things and we've made the effort for your sake now there's not many people that can actually see it the way I do put it together understand it and explain it so therefore without it being explained put together and constructed there's no real help for it is there no, we, you then rely on the people closest to you to help you with your condition to help you with the way you are but if they don't understand it or they are like those wild vindictive spiteful people or they are deliberately setting out to harm you you haven't really got a chance in this world Genuinely, you haven't got a chance from birth. You're nothing more than a target. You're not. You're not giving them back what they want. They're not getting the feedback that satisfies them. They didn't have children so they could satisfy that child's life. No, no, no. They've got children to satisfy their own lives, and you're not satisfying them. You're not giving them that. So therefore, they reject you. Reject a child. Reject a baby it doesn't give you the feedback you want because it doesn't satisfy you because it doesn't make you happy and then it's that child's fault and every time you have to accept that that child doesn't fit your little fairy tale of what life should be you've got the right to inflict on that child is that a nice way to behave is that a nice way to treat the life you've created is that a nice way to have to live for that child who doesn't know any different who's never been told any different doesn't know that it's wrong while you imply, enforce and push upon them the protocol and procedure of your satisfaction for your satisfaction because all the child is meant to do is satisfy you and that's the only reason you brought it into the world. Just because you've got the bits that can create a child doesn't give you the right. What you put in place is the responsibility for the life you create. By putting in place the responsibility, then you've earned the right to have a child. Very few people in this world have the right to have children. All you've got is the ability. And with that ability, all you're doing is ruining lives.